Yeah, I think uh, that, yeah, so the concept of your noise is my signal kind of permeates my entire research career. And, um, and uh, so this was, um, yeah, so it, this, was, this came out of the realization that when somebody's, um, when a researcher is trying to tackle a problem, they're trying to tackle the problem that's in, the, in front of them, right? Oh, I'm gonna um, you know, uh, analyze this sound to create an algorithm to detect what, what, what the words are, right? The NLP processing. Or I have this picture, I'm gonna do computer vision on it to see if it's a cat or a dog, right? So you, you're, you're, you're working on that primary problem. But, but what I found was um, whenever um, somebody's solving a particular problem, the times where it doesn't work could actually be the solution for something else. So a great example for this is the project that I just mentioned earlier, which was the uh, audio processing for, for pulmonary ailments. So the trick that we played there was that there was this whole history of, of uh, audio processing that was done where you, know, you, you basically, um, uh, there was uh, uh, probably 20 years of research where people focus on trying to remove the vocal tract noise. So when I'm speaking, my, my vocal tract, the noise that's created from my vocal tract, actually causes a lot of these algorithms to not work well. So researchers try to figure out filters to cancel out my vocal tract so the words coming out are easier to interpret. But it turned out that when you are canceling out the vocal tract noise, that same signal tells me what my lung function is. Because when you zoom into that signal, it's actually uh, indicative of what my airflow patterns are. And so when people have been looking at things that to them have been noise signals, if you turn the problem on its head and you look at that thing that people have been trying to filter out, could actually be the source for other solutions. Mm -hmm. So that's been really kind of a key way that we've looked at a lot of problems in the past, is turn the problem on its head. Um, um, another example of when we did this was, um, you know, the old phones, uh, whenever your phone got next to a speaker, it kind of would buzz. So I don't know if you've ever had that situation when your phone's about to ring, it, like the, the speakers go crazy. So that's basically the electromagnetic noise that's coupling onto the wire that's going to the speaker. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's just the electrical noise that's radiating off of it. So now it doesn't do that, right? A lot of times it doesn't do that because there's, we have all these digital filters and those kinds of things. But it turned out that um, that noise is actually really helpful to analyze what devices are being used. And so that was a lot of the work we used for our energy monitoring work. So, so, so the concept of, of, of the signals that people ignore can actually be a solution to other problems is kind of a theme that's been um, a topic for a lot of our research projects.